Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like this video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback and let's get started. Okay, so we do have a kite that is inscribed in a circle with radius x, which is the outside circle which is the black one, and it inscribes another circle with radius y, which is the green circle, where x is greater than y. Find the area of the kite in terms of x and y. Okay, this is kind of like a famous problem. You've probably seen, some of you may have seen it in the literature, but uh, it's kind of interesting, so I just uh, decided to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to start by making some connections, as always, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and make some connections and uh, we'll go from there. So I'd like to draw, um, first of all, connect the two opposite vertices of the kite, like this one. Uh, we could probably do better than that, right? Let me see. Yep. Okay, here we go. So what is really critical about this is that, first of all, uh, both of the centers from symmetry are gonna be on this segment which happens to be the diameter of the larger circle, okay, with radius x. And then, of course, it also contains the center of the smaller circle. And moreover, this is just going to, uh, this is axis of symmetry. It's basically going to uh, divide it up into two nice pieces. And we can do a lot of th great things from here. It's also important to note that since this is the diameter, uh, we're getting two right triangles here, which is super important. And let's call those lengths a and b you know that kite has some type of symmetry. So if the shorter side is called A, let's say the longer side is B. So basically the question is finding the area of the kite, right? So we have to associate everything with the area. So we can actually start by looking at the area of this kite, right? Uh, and let's go ahead and mark a little bit uh, more lengths here. The center for the larger circle is gonna be right here. So this should be the larger radius, which is X and the smaller one is y. Now, how do we find the area? Uh, let me make another connection here, like this one, for example. If I just go ahead and connect this here, that's going to be a perpendicular line. And then if I make a triangle here, you can basically see that I can divide it up into triangles whose height is always a. I mean, not a, but the radius y. Okay, a is the base. So for, for this triangle, the base is A, the height is Y. So basically I can find the area of that triangle. But similarly, I can find the area of the other triangle and the other one and the other one, so on and so forth. So altogether, we can actually find the area of each one. And then this is just gonna be another one. Let me just show you. Um, what I was trying to do here is I think right here, here we go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one as well. And then this one is should give us um, something nice as well. Of course, this is also going to be the radius, oopsies. This is also going to be uh, the radius of uh, the, you know, the smaller circle, which is y. So this is also y, right? What it does is actually, it also gives me the area of this triangle. What is the area of these triangles then? Well, it's base times height divided by two, so you're going to be getting a times y divided by two, and then two times that, and then you get two times b times y divided by two. And what this does is basically you can go ahead and simplify this and you're going to be getting a y plus b y, which is a plus b times the quantity y. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and proceed with this information. Let's see where we get. Well, this is just one way to find the area, obviously, right? Of course, uh, there's another way to find the area as well. And how do you find that? Well, since these are two big right triangles, like one of them is this one, for example, right? This is a right triangle. Its area is a times b divided by two. So a times b divided by two times two is also gonna give me the area of the kite, which is a times b. So therefore, this is the area of the kite. This is the area of the kite. So since they're both areas, I can actually set them equal to each other, which is nice, right? Well. This gives me a plus b times y equals ab. And from here, I'm getting y equals ab divided by a plus b. So this is kind of nice because it gives me one of the radii in terms of a and b, which are the side lengths, which we don't need. But in order to make a, a, 
establish a relationship between x, y and the area, we would need this type of equation. Okay, so that's one thing that I wanted to establish. The second thing is I just want to know what x is going to look like. Well, x is kind of easy to find because x happens to be the radius of the larger circle. And if you double that, you get the diameter, which is the whole diagonal here. And the diagonal is also the hypotenuse of a right triangle here, the one that I just shaded, right? So from Pythagorean theorem, we can't just avoid it, right? We have to use it. We get a squared plus b squared, right? is equal to the hypotenuse squared, but the hypotenuse is just two times x. So if you square that, you'll get four x squared. All right, this is from Pythagorean theorem. Well, what this means is that I can actually find x in terms of a and b, if that's gonna help me in any way. So what I'd like to do is probably uh, keep it like this, because what I wanna do is I wanna manipulate this equation and Let's think about it now. What is the question asking for, right? The question is asking for the area of the kite in terms of x and y, which are the radii. So I need the area, right? Well, what is the area? Well, there are two ways to write the area, but let's just talk about one of them. Well, the area is equal to a times b, right? So that's basically what I need to associate. So area is equal to a times b. So then the question is, can I just get rid of the a and b and express this in terms of x and y only? And yes, there is a way to do that. But how do we do it? Well, it's just going to take some algebraic manipulations and here we go. Okay, I'm going to start with this equation. What I'd like to do is, since I have uh, y as a b over a plus b, I want to write this and you know that there are a lot of identities that you can use with quadratics and they're all really good identities, but one of them is I can write this a squared plus b squared uh, as a plus b squared minus 2ab, right? And this is also very helpful because sometimes, you know, we use um, factoring theorems like, for example, Sophie Germain is going to take care of, um, is going to use this uh, or other similar expressions that can be factored. So sometimes some of two factors can be uh, factored, especially if they're fourth powers. Anyways. To keep a long story short, uh, I'm going to set this equal to 4x squared. Now, you got to remember that our goal is to solve for a, b. So I'm always, I need to focus on finding a, b. But I do have a plus b here. So if I can replace a plus b with something, and that's going to come from the other equation. So what I'd like to do is, I'd like to isolate a plus b here. Let me go ahead and do that. And a plus b is going to equal a, b over y from here, right? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this expression and substitute here. That way, I'm going to end up with something that contains AB as a variable only. And that way, hopefully I can solve for AB. And remember, we're trying to find AB in terms of X and Y. So that should be our focus all the time. Okay, let's go ahead and do the substitution. I'm going to replace A plus B with AB over Y. But of course, I have to square that minus 2ab, and that is going to equal 4x squared. Awesome. Great. So we got something nicer because the only thing that contains, or the only variable here is ab. Well, well you might be saying x and y are variables. Well, we're going to treat them as constants, okay, at this point. Because our goal is to solve for ab, so we don't really care about anything else. So let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, this should give me a squared b squared over y squared minus 2ab and then I can just go ahead and pull this, uh, bring it over to the left, and I should be getting something like this. Well, this doesn't look very nice, does it? We can make it nicer. How? Get rid of the fractions. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides or everything by y squared. So let's go ahead and multiply this by y squared. And of course, when you multiply zero by y squared, it's still gonna be zero, so it doesn't really matter. That's what's cool about zero. Zero is awesome. So if I go ahead and distribute y squared, I should be getting a squared b squared. And notice that y is not equal to 0 here, of course. Minus 2y squared ab minus 4x squared y squared is equal to 0. Awesome. Now, if you go ahead and write this down as kind of like put that in parentheses, you're going to see that, okay, the coefficient of ab is negative 2y squared. Nice. Now, since I'm trying to solve for ab here, that's my goal, right? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to use substitution because substitution is cool and I love it. So let's go ahead and call a, b, u, okay? Because u is always awesome, you know? So this is going to turn into u squared minus 2y squared, 
okay? And I'd like to write it like this, times u minus 4x squared y squared. Since I'm trying to solve for u here, x and y are considered constants. Awesome. But here's one thing you got to remember here. The product of two roots, again, from Vieta's formulas. Remember, we had a video on Vieta's formulas. You can check that out if you're not familiar with Vieta's formulas. But Vieta's formulas tell us that the product of the roots is negative. Therefore, one of the roots is negative. The other one is positive. So I don't really care about the negative root because I know that the area, which is AB, which is U, is not going to be negative. So I'd like to focus on the positive solution. Therefore, u is going to equal negative b. By the way, the coefficient of u here is negative 2y squared. So negative b is going to be 2y squared plus minus, but I will ignore the minus sign, plus the square root of b squared. Okay, that's going to be 4y to the fourth minus 4ac. So a is 1, so we're just going to do 4c. But c is negative, so I'm going to turn this into a positive sign and multiply the c the positive version by 4. So that's just going to give me 16x squared y squared. All right? Awesome. And all over divided by 2a, which is 2, because a is 1. Awesome. Great. Now we're almost done. Let's just simplify this expression a little bit, make it a little nicer looking, and then we'll be done. Okay. So from here, what I can do is I can pull out some terms, because here we, inside the radical, we have a common factor, which is 4y squared. So if I go ahead and factor that, 4y squared, I should be getting here y squared plus 4x squared. Nice. Okay, cool. Now what happens to the 4y squared is that I can take it out. That's going to give me 2y squared plus 2y multiplied by y squared plus 4x squared. We're not done yet. We're still going to be able to simplify this and that's going to be real nice. Now, you got to remember that we were trying to find the area of the kite all this time, and we called it u. So the area of the kite in simplest form is then y squared plus y times the square root of y squared plus 4x squared. And that brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, this is one of those generalizations which you can apply to many different situations, you can replace x and y with numbers, you can graph it, you know, like Desmos, I've done it with Desmos, and so on and so forth. But I hope you enjoyed the video, I'll see you in the next one, take care, bye-bye.